It's a good morning, huh? It's a good day to choose joy, right? Come on, man. Don't let me be the only one up here talking. Like, let's, a conversation. This is, this is good. It makes me feel good up here. Man, look alive. No, it, it is a good morning. Uh, I, I just, I love it. I love it. I love it. Love being in this house with you guys. Love being in this house with you guys. Um, that was cool, the prayer cast, wasn't it? Uh, that's a, it's a buddy of mine's ministry, and um, they just do some great work for the Lord and the kingdom. Th- their heart is to create a video for every country that's out there um, and to have a, a video and a prayer to go along with it. And, you know, like Drew was saying, the body of Christ is far larger than uh, the local church here at uh, Grace Christian Fellowship. So it, it's just awesome that we can, you know, fix our gaze on, on the bigger picture and the scope of, you know, what the Lord's doing all over the world. And um, it's just awesome to be a part of that, to pray into it. You know, when we look at that video and, and you know, under our breath, we're, we're praying and, and we're agreeing and, uh, and, and, we're, and we're asking the Lord to move into these areas um, he's, hearing our, he's hearing our voice. It's not like we're just sitting here and, and we don't have a part in it. That's the beautiful thing with prayer. We can actually utilize that to make a change in the world. And so uh, a- along with that, I want to talk about, you know, it's nice, the prayer cast. We see what's going on in Honduras and some of the issues that they're having. Um, but I want to bring up an issue this morning with you guys that I've perceived um, that's happening in the U.S. a lot in our culture and in this generation. And I want to talk about it because... Uh, I believe that we are uh, very much a solution to this problem that's going on, uh, and that is a problem of a commitment deficiency. I feel like there's a commitment deficiency in this generation. Commitment deficiency. And I was hearing some, some stats um, that, that, that backed what I had been perceiving. And when I say w- what I've perceived, it's, you know, I, I deal with a lot of people and, and, you know, younger, older, and, and I see some of the issues that people are facing, and I see how a lot of it has to do with, with a, a, a lack of commitment. They have a, a lack of uh, a model of what commitment looks like, um, in the Bible, you'll read the word faithfulness. You'll read the word steadfastness. I'm using the word commitment um, because I believe that it, 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 it translates to this generation. It translates to our day and age. It's, it's, it's what we get and understand. Um, and, you know, all of us, we, we, we have a responsibility to preach the gospel to this generation. We have to teach the gospel to this generation. You're born today to teach the gospel, the good news, to this generation in your language, in your life, in your mannerisms, and in the way that they reflect Christ Jesus, you teach people the good news, the gospel. Okay, so what I want to talk about this morning is this commitment deficiency. And I was looking at some stats, uh, and, you know, the... (laughs) I'm just looking at relationally how we get to experience commitment. And really, the biggest way for us to experience commitment in God's eyes is, is through an interrelational uh, is, is marriage. Uh, interrelationally is, is marriage. It's one of the greatest commitments that a man and a woman could make to one another. Okay, And when I look at the marriage relationship in society today, the divorce rate is about 44, 45% projected to be in 2000, uh, in 2022. So you take what God has intended between a man and a woman, which is marriage, and that great commitment, that lifelong commitment, and that covenant is being broken about half the time in society. Then you look at what it looks like for a mother or a father to be committed to a child, and you flip it for a child to grow up feeling like someone's committed to them, 
someone loves them. And data from the U.S. Census Bureau says that 18.5 million kids grow up without a father. This makes the U.S. the world leader in fatherlessness. Fifty-one percent of kids that are born are born out of wedlock. I, I'm sharing all this because we have people in this generation that struggle with commitment, and you know what I understand is I, I believe that they don't even realize that they're longing for an example of what someone being committed to them feels like, and they lack the example of what commitment looks like to another. Because if a child is raised in a home that will say about 50% of the time their parents are going to get divorced, and of those kids that are born in a home that have a mom and a dad, the divorce rate, again, is about, is about half. This is a problem, guys. This is a problem because we have these kids growing up, and some of us are in this room that just haven't seen what it looks like to be a faithful man or a faithful woman. And I'm sharing this because part of the gospel Part of the good news is that we have one who is so devoted to us. We have a God who is so committed to us. And he's given us in Christ not only a solution of his commitment to mankind, that God wants to reconcile and had planned to reconcile the world back to himself. He loved mankind so much. We were made in his image. He loved us so much that he said, you know what? Because sin came into the world, you've died, you were far from me, but I've got a solution. I'm sending my Messiah, I'm sending the anointed one who's going to bring you back into my presence, and essentially I'm going to adopt you as sons and daughters. You're coming back into my home. I've had this plan. I'm so committed to you, and it's through Christ Jesus that we get to come back into the presence of God. We get to come back into a right relationship with him. So Jesus, it's interesting, not only is Jesus Christ the, the display of God's and the solution to God's faithfulness and his commitment towards us, but it's in Christ that he is also the example of what it looks like for a man to be filled with the presence of God and to walk in commitment to something that's larger than himself, to be committed to his father, to be obedient, even when it's not comfortable or convenient. I was thinking about, you know, you know you're committed to something when you're doing what doesn't feel good all the time. Like, there's things that I do that just, I just don't feel like doing them, but you know it's because we've made a commitment, we're doing this. It was really hot this past week, and I'm coaching Brody's softball te or, um, baseball team. It's coach pitch. Boy, these kids are just a hoot, man. Well, I've had so much. This is my first year coaching uh, Brody's, Brody's baseball team, and it is so fun to see these kids. I, I swear. It is, um, man, they're all over the place. It's, it's the, one of the most intense things I've done, and I've done a lot. I kid you not. I get done with this game. And during the game, I'm like, you know, ready position, watch the batter. And you got the kids just kicking, kicking up dirt like this, <laughs> taking dirt, going around like this, just, just throwing it up in the air. And I'm like, no, Lincoln, we're not doing that. You know, you know James, watch the batter. You're going to get hit with the ball. You know, like the kids, you know, you know, there's two outs. You know, there's one out. You catch the ball. Where are you going to throw the ball? You're going to throw it to first. Da, 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 da. Man, after that game, I'm, I'm exhausted. Uh, 
but it, it, it's a joy. It's so much fun. But this week it was super hot, and and it, it's just honestly after a long day of work, that's the last thing I wanted to do. And I love this. I love this sport. I love coaching with them, and I love I love playing with. It. It's the last thing I wanted to do was to get out to that field and teach and coach and uh, parent in some cases uh, these kids. And uh, but we said, you know what? We said, we committed to this, Brody. And, and he was tired. It was a long day. I mean, he, he, was, he was playing, so he was zapped with energy come 6 o'clock. But we said, you know what? We've committed to this, and we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We don't feel like it right now, but we've, we've made a commitment to the team, and we made a commitment to make this happen, and so we're going to do it. And we get out there, and, and, and we do it. We have some fun. But, you know, the point is, commitment, it always starts with a choice. You always... Wherever there's commitment involved, it starts with a choice, you know. You make the choice, and you say, this is the road we're going down. Come hell or high water, whether we feel like it or not, this is what we're doing, okay? And, and that's what we have in, in Christ. I mean, the things that Jesus went through, our example, the model of faithfulness, I could only imagine. I could only imagine. But we see, we see how Jesus operated, and we see the choices that he made. And we see how God honors when people choose him and stick to his plan, or when people are found faithful to his plan. Second Chronicles 16.9 says that the eyes of the Lord, I love this verse and I say it a lot, but the eyes of the Lord search to and fro the whole earth so that God would see whom he could give strong support to those whose hearts are, the word says blameless, but really it means fully committed to him. God is looking for people who are fully committed to him so that he can show you strong support in your life. But the key word there is fully committed to him. And again, it starts with choice. It starts with choice. I want to read uh, Joshua uh, chapter 24. Uh, with you guys. If you have Bibles, pull them out. If not, they'll be on the walls here. Joshua 24, 14. Joshua tells the people, he says, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness, reliability, trustworthiness. That's faithfulness, guys. Reliability, trustworthiness. He says, serve the Lord. Throw away the gods, your forefathers, Worship beyond the river in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua's drawing a line in the sand and declaring for me and my house, this is the decision that I'm making, and we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, far be it from us for us to forsake the Lord and to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our, uh, and our fathers up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and, perform, and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, you're not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the uh, the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, Joshua said, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. Joshua tells the people, 
In verse 23, he says, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord. Throw away the foreign gods among you. We were talking about this in, in our, our meeting this morning. About we, we don't have these foreign gods that we've set up that we devote ourselves to, right? Like they had. We have other things. These, they're called other desires that rise up in us. Things that we want to put our attention to. And that draws us away from having a fully committed heart to the Lord. So in other words, our heart, if we're not careful and intentional, our heart can become divided. Where we seek after the things of the world, we seek after temporal things, and our heart is not fully committed to him. Makes sense. And so there's an element of intentionality. There's an element of operating by which uh, you have spoken and declared that I am going to serve the Lord. I am committed to you, Father. I'm committed to you, Lord Jesus. Whether it feels comfortable or not, whether there's something flashy and something that looks good that you want to chase or job gets really good or job gets really bad, like what it, whatever, it, it, it's, it's the Lord that we're seeking after. It's the Lord that we're committed to and he's going to make our path straight. It's, it's, it's that type of obedience. It's that type of gaze that's fixed on the Lord, fully committed to him, a heart that's fully committed to him, that he's like, now I get to do my best work. Now I get to show myself strong through you. But it's a choice, guys. And I bring this up because, <laughs> as I mentioned before, we are a part of this solution to this commitment deficiency. You see, Jesus Christ is the faithful example. In Revelation, he talks about himself, he refers to himself as the amen and the faithful and true witness. He is the faithful and true witness. He is faithful, he was faithful to his father. He was committed to his father to the very, very end of his days walking on earth before God raised him from the grave. And he's still very much committed to his father now that he's seated at the right hand. And so Christ is our example. Christ is our Lord. And if we're committed to our Lord, each of us were growing into what's called Christ-likeness. You can come in as you are, but the heart here in this house, in this, this community, is the heart of the Father that you grow. You grow in Christ-likeness. You grow with more of the mindset of Christ and how Christ would deal with people, how Christ would, would operate, the same heart that Christ would have. And so that's what we endeavor to do. We endeavor to grow in Christ-likeness. And I've heard it said that in order... To grow in Christ's likeness, you have to know what Christ was like. <laughs> kind of makes sense, right? We, we, we need to look at Christ and say, what is he like? How would he handle that? Because a lot of that, we start to uncover our actual identity. Who actually God is calling us to be. Our destiny. Whether you see it when you look in the mirror or not. When you read scripture, you can read about Christ, you can read about the prophecies about Christ, and you can see about what Christ came to make available today for both you and I. A great verse in this is Isaiah 61, uh, verses 1 through 4. This is regarding Christ. Uh, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair." 
they will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that, they, that have become devastated for generations. You see what the Lord, the prophecy of the Lord here is that he is bringing good news. He's bringing good news. He's bringing good news to people that are in despair. That was me. That was many of you. All of you. Bringing good news to people who are in darkness, who are in despair, bringing hope to them. Again, good news, the gospel. The good news that God is fully committed to you. He knows your sins. He knows where you're at. He knows your darkest place, but yet he's been fully committed to you. Whether you had a faithful father, whether you grew up in a home that had divided parents, a broken marriage, broken household, or not, it doesn't matter because you have a faithful heavenly father. You have a God that has seen every movement. He has known about everything that your eyes have seen and have not seen, and yet he is still committed to you. He loves you so, 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 so much. This is the good news that Jesus Christ is bringing to us. It brings us back to the Father, and when we get that, when we get that we are loved, when we get that there's something that's committed to us, we then in turn become these oaks of righteousness that are not moved, that actually rebuild the cities of devastation that this is talking about. And I'm just going to translate this for us. Um, this is, like I said, right now what, we're, what I'm seeing is a commitment deficiency. So what I see is us who in the Lord start to see how fully committed our God has been, our Heavenly Father, that we have been adopted as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ to our God, who's fully committed to us. We then can let what has come upon us flow out of us, that we can show and display what it looks like to be a people who are committed, whose yes means yes, who are not wavering upon feeling, do I feel like you know, showing up to church today, I don't know. Well, it's not about what you feel. It's about pouring into the community of believers that are among you because you have so much to offer. You have so much to give. Do I show up for baseball practice or not? I don't know. Well, yeah, no, it, you said yes to it. You're going to do it. Do I, do, I, do I have that difficult conversation with my wife or with my husband? I, I, or should I just shut up and just... No, you said you're going to love her. You said you're going to love him. So do it. It's a commitment you've made because you are a man, you are a woman who has the spirit of the living God inside of them. And that spirit is a spirit of commitment. It's a spirit of faithfulness. That's who you were made to be. That's who you are and that's how it's like us to act. That's who you are and that's how it's like us to act. I'm committed to that. I'm going to see it through. I'm going to see it through. We're going to see the baseball season through. We're going to see this marriage through. I'm, going to see, I'm not going to give up on you, kids. I'm not going to give up on you. Psalm 89.1, it says, I will sing the steadfast love of the Lord forever with my mouth, and I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. Man, the world is longing to see what it looks like for people that are committed to a greater cause. People around you need to feel that you're committed to them. Because to be committed to God is to be committed to the things that matter most to God. And he is in the people business. And he, ah, these young kids around us, Just need to feel that someone's in, standing in their corner still. When no one's loved them, when they haven't had a mother or a father to fight for them.
that love is for them based off of how you perform. If, if they're walking in sin, then they feel like, you know, they, they don't have anyone in the corner. That's when we need to go in. That's when we need to stay commitment, to show commitment. Even if they, like, stiff arm us, you know, and, and, they, and they, they're hard to love. I, I, I just, sometimes I, I just want to say to some people, like, yo, like, help, help me help, help me help you. Like, like, don't run from this love. Don't run from my support because I want to help you and I can help you. Some people just run from it, but they want somebody who, like the Lord, just, just continues to chase after. Just say, come on, I'm here for you. I'm in your corner. I'm for you. It doesn't matter what you did. I'm still for you. I'm still for you. And that's the voice of a loving Heavenly Father. It says, I'm still for you. And we know that in this room, but people outside this room don't understand that because they haven't had, I'm going to assume that they haven't had an example of what it looks like for someone to be committed to them on their highs and their lows to just be for them. See, that's what we get to do in the image of Jesus Christ. That's what we get to do in his image. That we now, the ones who were in despair, who've received the good news, we have become those oaks of righteousness. You know an oak of righteousness is not easily moved. Uh, it, <laughs> an oak tree is not pushed over by a wind. It, that thing is strong. It's steadfast. It doesn't waver. It's strong. It's still and that's what we get to, we, we have become that. And it's my desire that we can help develop that in the culture, in the generation that we have been born into. That we can help develop with the Lord, taking people who've been in despair and helping them grow into an oak of righteousness where they can see and feel the deep love and commitment from the Father. And we have the privilege to be conduits of that. To allow what has flowed into us to flow out of us. That same love, that unconditional love for people. When we're doing things that we necessarily don't feel like doing, but we know it's right. And we know that we've, we've committed ourselves to it. Because the Lord's committed to it. So I want to pray right now. I want to pray uh, out of this verse in uh, 2 Thessalonians 3.5. It says, May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and the steadfastness of Christ. And I just pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that you would direct the hearts, the hearers right now, Father, the hearts of the hearers to the steadfastness of Christ, that they would emulate the type of obedience the type of immovable faithfulness that Christ displayed to you and then in turn displays it to us, that he's just so fully committed to us, so fully committed to us, that Christ made that choice to obey you and to love you, Father. And I pray that, Father, in his name, our hearts would be directed to that type of faithfulness, to have that type of commitment to you, Father in a world that is drawing for our attention, that we would stay committed to you, Father, and that we would show your faithfulness and your love to those that you've put around us. Old and young, Father, that the world would see just how good you are and how much you love them, Father, because of the commitment that we have to them, to love them and to see them grow. So, Father, I thank you for changing some of these statistics, Father. That I believe, Father, as I'm praying right now and we're hearing this message, I know that you're stirring things in our hearts and you're showing us uh, just what matters so much to you. So I thank you, Father, that these statistics change. I thank you that mindsets change because we get to unlock new truths to people a truth of the kingdom of heaven, the truth of the good news. And it's in Christ I pray. Amen. All right, you guys.
We cool on that? We good? We hear that? Yeah? All right. Um, you know, there's a... You got, you got something, right? I'll close it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my time's up. No. <laughs> <laughs>